Up till now on this channel, we have discussed underwater tunnels and sea crossing bridges, but never quite as something as we're about to show you. Just the sheer scale of this engineering will blow your mind. It's the world's largest emergent tunnel connecting Denmark with Germany and stretching up to 18 kilometers. It'll be built across the Fomarn Belt, a strait between the German island of Fomarn and the Danish island of Lolland. It will not only connect Germany and Denmark, but will also serve as a connection for Scandinavian countries and the rest of Europe. It's designed as an alternative to the current ferry service from Rodby and Puttgarden, which carries millions of passengers every year. Where the crossing now takes 45 minutes by ferry, it'll take just 7 minutes by train and 10 minutes by car. If you look at the world map, you can see that Denmark and Germany are connected by land and share a border. So why do you need a tunnel? Well, it's because Denmark is a geographically complex country. It's a mix of 1,400 islands scattered across the Baltic Sea. Even Denmark's capital, Copenhagen, isn't located on its mainland, but rather one of the isolated islands, Zealand. This means that the fastest route to Germany or Central Europe is via the Fermarn Strait. At present, the only means of transport could be a flight, ferry, or a train through the Danish mainland, which will then drop you to northern Germany. To avoid this 160-kilometer detour across the Danish mainland and make travel more comfortable and fast, a direct pathway needs to be created between the Danish islands and Germany. This is where the concept of the immersion tunnel comes in. By making a more direct route, Europe would be just minutes away from Scandinavia and vice versa. But why did Germany and Denmark choose an immersion tunnel over conventional structures like a bridge or an underground tunnel? Is it worth disturbing the sea for human convenience? Stick with us to find out the answers. If you're new to this channel, then welcome to Visionary Builds. We bring the latest news in architecture from around the world, so hit the subscribe button to watch two videos weekly. The Fermarn Belt Tunnel is part of a Trans-European Transport Network, or TENT, which aims to streamline infrastructure and reduce the environmental impact of Europe's transport network. Under its flagship, Europe will oversee the construction of new roads, railways, inland waterways, airports, seaports, inland ports, and traffic management systems. The Fermarn Tunnel will go a long way toward creating a more interconnected and efficient community. By now, people are desperate to find a solution to the transport bottleneck, and they're justified. Denmark is set to start taxing flights departing from Denmark to limit the effects of air pollution. This is due to the limited capacity of ferries, forcing people to commute via car or take a train. Currently, if you take the fastest train between Hamburg and Copenhagen, it'd take you around four and a half hours. When the tunnel's completed, the same journey will take two and a half hours. The traffic between the Scandinavian Peninsula and Germany via Denmark can either take the ferry across Fermarn Belt or take a longer route via bridges between the islands of Zeeland, Funen, and the Jutland Peninsula. Discussion for the project can be traced back to the late 90s. At the time, both countries were eager to construct a sea crossing bridge rather than a tunnel. They envisioned a bridge with a four-lane motorway and two electrified rail tracks. This solution was for years regarded as the most likely scheme and detailed plans were drawn up. After a whole decade and several feasibility studies, the Danish project planner suggested that an immersed tunnel would instead present fewer construction risks and would cost about the same. So why was the bridge idea dumped away? The thing is that the seabed of the Fermarn Belt was soft and hence unsuitable to support such a structure. An underwater sea tunnel was also rejected for the same reason. To construct a traditional tunnel, a tunnel boring machine is used that would dig the seabed. However, there was a risk of the seabed collapsing, burying all the valuable worth beneath the ocean. Not to mention that the cost of such an undersea tunnel would be outrageous. That's why an immersion tunnel was the only viable solution. An immersion tunnel means that parts of its structure will be built on land before being carried to its place in the ocean. In this way, it's a less invasive procedure rather than digging an underground tunnel. Valued at approximately $8 billion, the project will be financed by Denmark, which will collect a toll from the crossing. Germany will, however, pay 800 million euros to connect the crossing to its motorway network. European Investment Bank, EIB, provided a 123.5 million euro grant from the Connecting Europe facility, CEF, for the project construction. The project has secured the money and the clearance from both the Danish and German governments. But how are they planning to build it? The first step in the process is the construction of a working harbor on the road by Haven in Lollen, Denmark, and the Poot Garden on the island of Fermarn. New channels and access roads have been constructed, utility connections installed, and several existing buildings at the construction site have been demolished. New water holes and amphibian fences have also been established around the construction site. The working harbor at Robai Haven will be the largest of the two as this is where all the tunnel elements will be constructed. Factory halls will accommodate six production lines, five for the tunnel's standard elements and one for the special elements. 
A temporary village will be built for the 1,300 workers. The village was completed in the spring of 2023. The factory was completed in August 2023. The tunnel trench is being dredged by a fleet of special dredging vessels that'll dredge 19 million cubic meters of sandstone and soil. The dredged material will be deposited near the Rod by Haven, where it'll be used to create new beaches and recreational areas. The work harbor will receive the delivery of huge quantities of sand, gravel, steel, and cement, all necessary elements for tunnel construction. The factory at Rod by Haven will build 89 concrete elements, each weighing 73,000 tons. Together, their weight is equivalent to more than 13,000 elephants. The Fermarn Belt Tunnel will feature a four-lane highway and a double-track railway. Each of the 89 tunnel elements will be 700 feet long, 137 feet wide, and 33 feet high. Each tunnel element will have five separate sub-tunnels, two for the cars, two for the trains, and one service tunnel in between. The tunnel elements will be placed on a 12-meter deep trench. The elements will be cast step by step in segments of approximately 80 feet in the factory. Each segment takes a total of nine weeks to be completed. To ensure the quality of the casting process, the casting takes place inside climate controlled halls. After all, it's an underwater project that's claimed to last 120 years in total. Each special element will include a basement area for technology. This will make the construction process and maintenance of the finished tunnel easier. Once an element is constructed, waterproof bulkheads are installed temporarily at both ends to keep a dry workspace inside. After that, it's taken to the dry port and towed into the place where it'll be lowered. The elements are then lowered to the seabed using cranes with high precision at the trench that was pre-dug by the dredging machines. At its highest depth, the tunnel will be 130 feet below sea level in the Baltic Sea. The bulkheads not only prevent water entry inside each element, but they also aid in connecting adjacent pieces. There's a sealed space between the bulkheads so that huge external pressure pushes them together when the water's pumped out. This ensures a completely waterproof and secure connection. Once all the elements are lowered through the cranes in their place, the work on the tunnel's technical and mechanical installations can commence. These include railway tracks, ventilation, cameras, communication systems, painting, and much more. Each of these systems will be thoroughly tested in the final part of the construction phase before the expected opening in mid-2029. To secure the tunnel, a layer of protective sand and gravel will be laid on both sides. With time, nature will transform it into a seabed, turning it into a haven for marine life. A tunnel portal is built in both Denmark near Rodby Haven and near Germany near Poot Garden to connect the tunnel's railway and motorway with the upgraded and newly built roads and railways. While both countries are adamant about completing the project by 2029, there has been some pushback from the local communities, especially from the German side. The concerns range from the potential increase of train noise to the loss of jobs related to the ferry business. Even though this project has also created hundreds and thousands of jobs, critics argue that they're only temporary and will end upon the tunnel's completion. Then there's the environmental aspect of it. The marine life in this area of the Baltic Sea thrives in clear water conditions, something the dredging of the seabed to create the trench for the tunnel will disturb. The project handlers at the Fairmarn AS push back by saying that their investigation has shown that there will be no harm to plant and animal life and the habitats of porpoises, birds, etc. In addition, as a result of this project, new natural areas and stone reefs on the Danish and German sides will be created. Nature needs space, and there will be more space for nature through the combined land and sea space. In theory, the immersion tunnel is a fascinating feat in human engineering. As life in the sea continues undisturbed, beneath the seabed, there's another world dominated by humans and advanced technology. What are your thoughts on the Farmarn Belt project? Will it beat other modes of transport like the ferry and air travel? Only time will tell. If you liked today's video, hit the like and subscribe button. We're committed to releasing two videos each week, so your support means a lot. We'll see you in the next video.